in this week we have the opportunity to take five minutes each day and to think about and listen to the words of Jesus from the cross. He spoke seven times, made seven statements during that process of crucifixion and those seven are recorded for us in the four Gospels. And I believe they have tremendous meaning for us today in the turmoil and the struggles that, that we're facing. Some of us might be experiencing new levels of fear. I have a dear friend who's single and so she's um, living on her own during this lockdown and she hasn't had much human contact for, for nine days and certainly no, no physical contact. And she spoke of experiencing a full-blown panic attack for the first time. My son, my youngest son, was sent home from school at the end of the school day and then received um, email communication that the school is closing and we, we don't know when it's going to open again. Others are going through the process of losing jobs or perhaps facing the prospect of economic collapse nationally or the collapse of, of a business. We are disorientated in this time. We're experiencing turmoil and anxiety. How extraordinary then that as we looked at Jesus' journey to Calvary, as we track with him, we see that his disorientation resonates, reflects perhaps what we're experiencing. On Palm Sunday, he was welcomed as the king who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is he. And people threw their coats on the ground so that his donkey wouldn't have to touch the earth. They waved palm branches welcoming him as a king. But within just a few days, those same people were shouting for him to be crucified. And as he hung on a cross, were sneering at him and shouting obscenities at him. A time of turmoil for Jesus as he goes from being heralded as a king to dying, utterly betrayed even by his closest friends. God on a cross is God with us in our fear, in our anxiety, in our disorientation. Luke records for us um, one of the words that Jesus spoke from the cross as the crowds were um, shouting obscenities, as the religious rulers were saying, well, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Is he really the king of the Jews? Jesus was crucified next to two other criminals. And one of the criminals hanging next to him on a cross also hurled insults on him. But the other criminal tried to intervene and said, you know, don't, don't do that. We're getting what our sins deserve, but, but he's done nothing wrong. And then he says to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, in the midst of the work of Calvary, a tremendous theological work, we might speak of the work of carrying away the sins of the world onto himself. We might speak of Jesus' crucifixion. He's bearing the wrath of God, the just punishment for the sins of the world. So in that work of the cross, Jesus is in tremendous intellectual and emotional and spiritual anguish doing this huge seismic cosmic theological work of salvation. But in the midst of that work, he hears the voice of one sinner, one thief, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus speaks to the man and it's just extraordinary. And I believe those words echo through 2000 years to us today. Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Into our anxiety, into our turmoil, into our disorientation, the Son of God from the cross speaks. Today matters.